Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Justin Jennings. I'm a curator at the Royal Ontario Museum uh, in Toronto. And uh, I was the curator for the Winnie the Pooh Exploring the Classics show that opened up in early March. And maybe a few of you got to see the show, but it was only up for six days. And uh, like everything else, uh, around March 13th, the uh, museum closed. We turned off the lights. Uh, and uh, Winnie the Pooh sort of been stuck in the Hunter Acre Wood ever since. So what I wanted to do today was was talk to uh, to all the kids out there, all the kids at heart, um, and uh, tell you a little, tell you a few stories, a couple of poems, and we'll talk, of course, about this guy right here, uh, Winnie the Pooh. But I'm going to dial the uh, the clock back um, and talk about uh, 100 years ago when a, a little boy was born, and a year later he bought a little bear that he called a number of different things, and finally called uh, Winnie the Pooh. So I'm going to do that. So I'll tell stories here. I'm going to move us soon enough to my special reading nook that my children constructed. And uh, yeah, we're going to bring Winnie with us. I got Tigger here too. You see Tigger? Got Piglet. I think Piglet makes some noises here. That's probably a mistake. She's going to keep on going for a little bit. But anyways, there's Piglet. And we have uh, Eeyore here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's tell you some stories and, and get back to uh, a time about 100 years ago, 1920, when a young boy, Christopher Robin Milne, is born, and uh, Winnie the Pooh begins. So here we are. This is, I said, this is what my kids put together. We got a little reading nook here. Got all of our, our toys assembled. We'll put Pooh up there. We'll put all, all, we'll put Piglet here, Eeyore, Tigger. I'll hold on to this, this, this stuffy. And um, yeah, and we'll talk a little bit about um, about some of these about some of the original um, uh, stories. So as I was saying, that around in 1920, Christopher Robin was born to the author A. A. Milne. Now Min Milne wasn't a, ch a children's uh, book writer. He wrote a lot about different things, a lot of plays, other things. Um, but of course, when he when his son was born, he started thinking about kids and how to entertain them. And um, and his kid. Uh, his kid was also had a great imagination. So a year uh, when he was one years old, his mom, his mother went to Harrods and bought a bear, not too much different from this one here. And he would play with that bear. After a while, he called him called him Edward Bear, and he would go around uh, and play with different um, have different uh, scenarios with him. He bought Piglet. Uh, they bought the Tigger, and all these little stuffies were were his pals and all these adventures he would have in the city of London. Um, and then, as many of you know, as Canadians, what happened uh, around 1923, 1924, he starts going to the zoo a lot. And he meets uh, Winnie the Black Bear, that famous bear from Canada that came over to the London Zoo uh, in 1914. And uh, that little black bear, Winnie, was a crowd favorite. Uh, and uh, Christopher Robin loved that bear so much that he changed his bear's name from Edward Bear to Winnie the Pooh. And so, in around 1924, uh, when he's playing with Winnie the Pooh and playing with, with uh, Tigger, playing with uh, Piglet, um, they get a cottage and they move out into the, into the, into the woods every weekend. And he plays in, in this forest with all his little animals. And that's where the real stories of Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh begin in there. And so I'm gonna start taking you through a little bit of that magic here. I'm gonna begin with this book here, the book that maybe a few of you guys don't uh, don't know about or or a few people remember, um, and it's called When We Were Very Young. A. A. Milne. Uh, so it's a bunch it's a it's a bunch of poems in here. But the cool thing about this is this is the first mention of Winnie the Pooh. But interesting, it's not Winnie the Pooh yet. It's 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 Edward Bear. So it's a mention of Christopher Robin's bear before he changed his name. So I'll read a little poem uh, from this story. It's just as Edward Bear uh, is, is is starting to to become part of Christopher Robin's imagination. And soon enough, he's gonna be something very special. And you see all these illustrations here. Hopefully you can see, see these illustrations here. These are all uh, E.H. Shepard's illustrations. So uh, this guy, Ernest Shepard, Shepard, what he did is he illustrated all the pictures here for all the illustrations for Winnie the Pooh. So not only do we see the first mention of, the, of Christopher Robin's bear, we see the first depiction in this, in this poem of, of Winnie the Pooh, uh, how he would later look. So let's get to it. So the book, uh, the, the poem here, Teddy Bear. 
A bear, however hard he tries, grows tubby without exercise. Our teddy bear is short and fat, which is not to be wondered at. He gets what exercise he can by falling off the ottoman, but generally seems to lack the energy to clamber back. See, there he is right there on the ottoman. You see him? Falls off and just sort of sits there. And that's that first ever illustration of what Winnie the Pooh is going to be. Now, tumminess is just a thing which gets the fellow wandering. And Teddy worries lots about the fact that he was rather stout. He thought, if, I on if only I were thin, but how does anyone begin? He thought it really isn't fair to grudge me exercise and air. Do you see this little bear is stuck? He's stuck at home like a lot of you guys are stuck at home right now, like I'm stuck at home. He wants to get outside and exercise and he's stuck on his ottoman. So we'll keep on talking to this, about this pandemic. As I'll tell you what, Winnie the Pooh is great pandemic reading, great for when you're in self-isolation because it, uh, it really gives you a lot of, of, of nice ideas to what to do with yourself. Um, for many weeks, he pressed in vain, his nose against the window pane and envy those who walked about reduce, reducing their unwanted stout. None of the people he could see is quite, he said, as fat as me. Then with a still more moving sigh, I mean, he said, as fat as I. Now Teddy, as was only right, slept in the ottoman at night and with them crowded in as well more animals than I can tell. Huh, look at that. All of our animals are here, right here, enjoying the show as well. Not only these, but books and things such as kind relation, such as a kind relation brings, old tales of once upon a time and history retold in rhyme. There he is, you could see him. He's all stuck with everything else here, all the toys, all the books. He's in a big pile. There he is over there contemplating that he's saying, oh, a little bit too stout. I gotta get out and exercise, gotta get out of this dang house, right? One night it happened that he took a peep at an old picture book, wherein he came across by chance the picture of a king of France, a stoutish man, and down below these words, King Louis, so and so. Nicknamed the handsome, there he sat, and think of it, the man was fat. Ooh, right there, see, look at that picture again. See that, the King Louis right there? He opens that picture and says, wow, this guy looks a little like me. Our bear rejoiced like anything, to read about the famous king. Nicknamed the handsome, there he sat. And certainly the man was fat. Nicknamed the handsome, not a doubt, the man was definitely stout. Why then a bear for all his tub might yet be named the handsome cub. Might yet be named, or did he mean that years ago he might have been, for now we felt a slight misgiving is Louis so-and-so still living? Fashion and beauty have a way of altering from day to day. Is handsome Louis with us yet? Unfortunately, I forget. Next morning, nose to window pane, the doubt occurred to him again. What question hammered in his head? Is he alive or is he dead? Thus nose to pain he pondered, but the lattice window loosely shut, swung open with one startled, oh, our teddy disappeared below. So there he's sitting there on the window pane, contemplating Louis so-and-so, and guess what? He goes against the window and falls out. Let's see what happens. There happened to be passing by a plump man with a twinkling eye, who seeing Teddy in the street, raised him politely to his feet and murmured kindly in his ear, Soft words of comfort and of cheer. Well, well, allow me, not at all. Tut, tut, a very nasty fall. Our Teddy answered not a word. It's doubtful if he even heard. Our bear could only look and look. The stout man in the picture. That handsome king, could this be he? That man of adiposity. Wow, I don't know what that word is. I'll have to look that up after, adiposity. Impossible, he thought but still no harm in asking. Yes, I will. Look, he's about to talk to this guy. See, he falls out and he meets this guy in the street. And he says, oh, this must be King Louis. Let me talk to him. And you, he said, by any chance, his majesty, the King of France. The other answer, I am that, bowed stiffly and removed his hat. 
then said, excuse me with an air, but is it Mr. Edward Bear? See, that's what he used to be called, Edward Bear, before he became Winnie the Pooh. And Teddy, bending very low, replied politely, even so. They stood beneath the window there, the king and Mr. Edward Bear, and handsome, if a trifle fat, talked carelessly of this and that. Then said his majesty, well, well, I must go on and ring the bell. Your bear, I think, he smiled good day and turned and went upon his way. See, they're bowing and they go on their way and Pooh gets back in his house. A bear, however hard he tries, grows tubby without exercise. Our teddy bear is short and fat, which is not to be wondered at. But do you think it worries him to know that he is far from slim? No, just the other way about. He's proud of being short and stout. There he's reading the paper, right? This is a great story for everybody, right? Of course, he's stuck at home, but in the end, too, he gets out, he meets this person, and of course, he feels good about himself despite all of his thoughts. Because I know, I know, at least for me, we get stuck here, we start worrying about stuff, right? We're trapped uh, in our houses, we can't go see our friends. And it's tough, right? It's tough for me. I'm sure it's tough for, for, for the little people. I'm sure it's tough for everybody. And so it's nice reading these, these Winnie the Pooh things and know, hey, little Edward Bear had the same problems as we do uh, nowadays. And so, so this book here, like I said, the first instance of talking about Winnie the Pooh, it's 1924. So little uh, Christopher Robin is four years old. And just after, as this is being published, the same time that the, the Milnes by that cottage in the woods that I talked about. So suddenly Edward Bear takes his, uh, sorry, Christopher Robin, I guess Edward Bear takes Christopher Robin, depending on how you think about things. They go out and they go to, the, go to this cottage and suddenly Christopher Robin, who's been cooped up in London for his entire life, has this incredible force behind him. So he drags his bear and literally we, we see all sorts of pictures. You can see him in the show. He dragged his bear everywhere. So he drags his bear out into the woods, drags out, Piglet and Tigger and Eeyore takes all these guys out with them. Um, and they go out and have adventures. And once again, it's a great thing to think about here. And when you have to do all this social distancing, because I know a lot of us want to see our friends, we want to hang out, we want to, uh, you know, ride our scooters or do whatever, have some ice cream. And we can't do that. But now, I know some of you, you probably have some dolls at home. They can be your friends too. You can get, take them out. Heck, I, I, I hope to see a, a few adults there out, out, out in the park the next few days with their stuffies, just enjoying some, uh, I guess you can't stop for tea, but you can keep walking and enjoy some, some of the experiences out there and, and just have some adventures. Um, uh, you know, we're excited. We're out in Hyde Park here. At some point, that, that's the, the, the park can open soon and we're gonna go out and we're gonna enjoy ourselves as a family. And we're going to have some adventures. And, and certainly Christopher Robin uh, did as well when he got out to the cottage. So I'm going to read you one of those adventures. So this is the classic, right? This is, this is the original Winnie the Pooh. Okay, so 1926. Um, this is coming out. So two years later, after uh, Christopher Robin has some of those experiences, and they start uh, writing them down. So I'll read a, a short one here. Pooh and Piglet go hunting and nearly catch a woozle. Okay, so hopefully a few of you know about this tale here. It's of course the great partnership of Pooh and Piglet, um, one of the one of the enduring friendships of all time. Okay, so let's let's see uh, let's read this story here. The piglet lived in a very grand house in the middle of a beech tree, and the beech tree was in the middle of the forest, and the piglet lived in the middle of the house, next to this house was a piece of broken board which had trespasser W on it. When Crystal Robin asked the piglet when, what it meant, he said that it was his grandfather's name and had been in the family for a long time. Crystal Robin said, you couldn't be called trespasser W and piglet said, yes, you could because his grandfather was, and it, because his grandfather was, and it was short for trespasser Will, which was short for trespasser William and his grandfather had had two names in case he lost one, trespasser after an uncle and William after trespassers. Hmm, okay, so here you go. You wanna see this picture here. So there's Piglet's, ho Piglet's house right there, you see it? 
See the trespasser W right up there? That's trespasser. That's uh, apparently Piglet's uh, name as far as Piglet's concerned. He lives in the middle of this house because as you know, in the 100 acre wood, everyone lives in trees. I've got two names at Christopher Robin Kirishley. Well, there you are. That proves it, said Piglet. One fine winter day, when Piglet was brushing away the snow in front of his house, he happened to look up and there was Winnie the Pooh, who was walking round and round in a circle, thinking of something else. And when Piglet called to him, he just went on walking. Hello, said Piglet. What are you doing? Hunting, said Pooh. Hunting what? Tracking something, said Winnie the Pooh. Very mysteriously. Tracking what, said Piglet, coming closer. That's just what I asked myself. I asked myself what? What do you think you'll answer? I shall have to wait until I catch up with it, said Winnie the Pooh. Now look here. He pointed at the ground in front of him. What do you see there? That right there. There's Winnie. There's Piglet. And what, what are you looking at there? Tracks, foot tracks. So that's the mystery. They're going to try to figure out what's going on here. Tracks, said Piglet. Paw marks. He gave a little squeak of excitement. Oh, Pooh. Do you think it's a, 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 a woozle? It may be, said Pooh. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. You never can tell with paw marks. And they are. This is a famous picture right here. We use this to advertise the show, and I, I'm sure everyone remembers that, right? Pooh and Piglet walking in the snow together. Uh, and they're always walking together in these shows. So this is really fantastic. With these few words, he went on tracking, and Piglet, after watching him for a minute or two, ran after him. Winnie the Pooh had come to a sudden stop and was bending over the tracks in a puzzled manner. What's the matter, said Piglet. It's a very funny thing, said Bear, but there seems to be two animals now. This, whatever it was, has been joined by another, whatever it is, and the two of them are now proceeding in company. Would you mind coming to me, Piglet, in case they turn out to be hostile animals? Now, you know Piglet's a pretty scared guy, so this is a big request. Piglet scratched his ear in, the, in a nice sort of way and said that he had nothing to do until Friday, and would be delighted to come in case it really was a woozle. You mean in case it really is two woozles, said Pooh. And Piglet said that anyway, he had nothing to do with do until Friday, so off they went together. There was a small spinnery, spiny, once again, these are big words for me, spiny of, I guess, a bunch of trees. There was a bunch of tree of, lar of large trees just there, just here. And it seemed as if the two woozles, if there is what they were, had been going around this spiny. So round the spiny went Pooh and Piglet after them. Piglet passed the time by telling Pooh what his grandfather Trespasser W had done to remove stiffness after tracking. And how his grandfather Trespasser W had suffered in his later years from shortness of breath and other matters of interest. And Pooh wondered, wondering what a grandfather was like. And if perhaps this was two grandfathers, they were after that, that, that they were after now, and if so, whether he, be, he would be allowed to take one home and keep it, and what Chris Robin would say, and still the tracks went on in front of them. So there you go. You can see these these two pals just talking and walking, having a great old time in the woods by themselves, trying to track down a fantastic beast. So suddenly, Winnie the Pooh stopped and pointed excitedly in front of them. Look, what said Piglet with a jump? So here he is. You see. Look, says Pooh, and look at Piglet jumping. So this is the great uh, shepherd illustration where you can feel Piglet just jumping up, right? And then to show that he wasn't frightened, he jumped up and down once or twice in an exercising sort of way. The track, said Pooh, a third animal has joined the other two. Oh my gosh, they got three animals now. Pooh's jumping up, uh, sorry, Piglet's jumping up and down. Pooh, cried Piglet, do you think it's another woozle? No, said Pooh because it makes different marks. It's either, it is either two woozles and one, as it might be, whizzle or two, as it might be, whizzles and one, if so it is, woozle. Are you confused? I'm a little confused here. There's whizzles, woozles, and wuzzles. Let us continue to follow them. So they don't know what they're following, but they're excited to follow it. So they went on, feeding just a little anxious now, in, in case the three animals in front of them were of hostile intent. 
and Piglet wished very much that his grandfather T. W. were there instead of elsewhere, and Pooh thought how nice it would be if they met Christopher Robin suddenly, but quite accidentally, and only because he liked Christopher Robin so much. And then, all of a sudden, Winnie the Pooh stopped again and licked the tip of his nose in a cooling manner, for he was feeling more hot and anxious than, than ever in his life before. There were four animals in front of them. There you go, too. So you can see Pooh and Pig getting a little nervous here. They were tracking one animal. They got four animals, and they don't know what they are and wh whether or not they have hostile intent. Do you see Piglet? Look at these tracks. There, I'm oh, sorry, three as it were, Woozles, and one as it was, Wizzle. Another, Woozle, has joined them. And so it seemed to be. There were the tracks crossing each other, crossing over each other there, getting muddled up with each other over there. But quite plainly, every now and then, the tracks of four sets of paws. I think, said Piglet, but he had licked the tip of his nose too and found that it brought very little comfort. I think that I have just remembered something. I've just remembered something that I forgot to do yesterday and didn't and shouldn't be able to do tomorrow. So I suppose I really ought to go back and do it now. Okay, so Piglet is trying to get out of here, right? Because there's four animals out there. We'll do it in this afternoon and I'll come with you, said Pooh. It isn't that sort of thing you can do in the afternoon, said Piglet quickly. It's a very particular morning thing that has to be done in the morning and if possible between the hours of, what, what would you say the time was? About 12, said Winnie the Pooh looking at the sun. Between, as I, as I was saying, the hours of 12 and 12, five. So really dear old Pooh, if you'll excuse me, what that, what's that? Pooh looked up at the sky and then, as he heard this whistle again, he looked up into the branch of a big oak tree and there he saw a friend of his. It's Christopher Robin, he said. So as these guys are about to panic, they hear a whistle. And who's up there in the tree? You see him? It's Christopher Robin. He's been hanging out there in the tree, looking at these, at these guys the whole time. Ah, then you'll be all right, said Piglet. You'll be quite safe with him. Goodbye, and he trotted off home as quick as he could. Very glad to be out of all danger again. There you can see, Pig see Piglet right there at the bottom. He's running away as fast as he can from Pooh, who's looking up. Because guess who's looking up at? At Christopher Robin, right? This is the great thing about these books. You can see that all the illustrations sort of play with each other and, and the words. Um, Christopher, Christopher Robin came slowly down the tree. Silly old bear, he said. What were you doing? First you, were, you went around the spiny twice by yourself, and then Piglet ran after you, and you went around again together, and then you were just going around a fourth time. Wait a minute, said Pooh, holding up his paw. He sat down and thought in the most thoughtful way he could think. Then he fitted his paw into one of the tracks, and then he scratched his nose twice and stood up. Yes, said Winnie the Pooh. I see now, said Winnie the Pooh. I've been foolish and deluded, said he, and I'm a bear of no brain at all. You're the best bear in the world, said Chris Robin soothingly. Am I, said Pooh, hopefully. And then he brightened up suddenly. Anyway, he said, it's a very it's nearly luncheon time. So we went home for it. So there you go. That's the story of Chris, uh, sorry, of, uh, of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet chasing their own tracks for, I don't know, probably like a half hour or so in the woods, hoping that they were finding a great, fantastic beast and instead just sort of finding themselves. And then, of course, going back as Winnie the Pooh loves to do have a little food. Um, and so this was the first, this first book. Uh, a couple years later comes the second book, The House at Pooh Corner. And, um, and, and as I said, that these stories are, are a part imagination from A.A. From, uh, from Milne, from Alexander Milne, the author, but also very much just telling the stories that his kid had and the adventures that he had. He would tell his father when you go out in the woods and, and enjoy, enjoy those, those little treks uh, before lunch with uh, Winnie the Pooh and with Tigger and Piglet and all, and all their friends. So, um, you know, it's great quarantine reading, of course, but also what I want you to do is just just live it, right? Get out there, uh, get in your backyard if you got one, get in the, get in the, get in the park, get, uh, get wherever you can. Uh, you don't need to bring your stuff if you're embarrassed about it, but go have some, go have some adventures, right? Lift up some rocks, play with some sticks, uh, you know, do something fun. Um, 
make up make up a little a little universe for you like Christopher Robin did um, alone in those woods and you had a great time um, you know doing all that stuff and I think uh, think you can do I know uh, I'm gonna do that when I'm done here talking to you guys so um, so that's so basically what happened then you have those books that come out in the 1920s Christopher and as Christopher Robin gets older um, of course he's not there with Winnie the Pooh anymore he's doing other things and his father uh, really leaves Winnie the Pooh behind so there's only one um, other book that talks about Winnie the Pooh and I'll leave you with one last poem that uh, that talks about some of those uh, last experiences really of saying goodbye to Pooh um, and that's what we do in the show we talk a little bit about um, about that and about sort of Krista Robin growing up, Milne no sort of growing out of, of talking about, about children, but that that hundred acre wood still stays with you. You know, that, that it's a place that we can all visit uh, whenever we want to. Um, I know it's a great time for me to think about Pooh, for example, on a, a day like this, sitting out. He always loved to sit in the in the in the, uh, in the creek there and and uh, enjoy the sunshine on his belly. You know, so I always have these images of Winnie the Pooh that come to me. Uh, you know, in, in, in days like this, really any day, of course, the last we did was the winter time. But uh, I want to read, read uh, the last uh, Pooh book um, here, or sorry, the last set of poems that talks about Pooh. You can see here, Christopher Robin, Pooh sort of playing. And this is actually uh, one of the images that ends um, the house at Pooh Corner here. And so um, let's, let's then, we started at the beginning with Edward Bear. We took you through the Hundred Acre Wood. And now what we'll do is is we'll just a little little do uh, do a little poem about about friendship about um, you know either think about your best friend or think about your best stuffy or or or, or whatever and as we read this this is a shorter poem we'll read this and think about Pooh and uh, and say goodbye to him at least for now um, when wherever I am there's always Pooh there's always Pooh and me whatever I do he wants to do where what where are you going today says Pooh well, that's very odd, because I was too. Let's go together, says Pooh, says he. Let's go together, says Pooh. Okay. There they are hanging out there, getting ready. So you imagine getting ready for the day. We got the right one. Yeah, yeah. Getting ready for the day, and, and uh, you're getting dressed, and there's Pooh getting ready to go out too with you. What's twice 11, I said to Pooh? Twice what, says Pooh to me? I think it ought to be 22. Just what I think myself, said Pooh. It wasn't an easy sum to do, but that's what it is, said Pooh, said he. That's what it is, says Pooh. See, and you see Pooh here. There's Pooh. He's actually got a little board here. He's trying to calculate. See all those little numbers? He's trying to do, he's trying to get to 22 here. Uh, once again, he's got the Christopher Robin there. He's playing next to him, and then Pooh is, is, is doing something else, helping him out. So they're together again. Let's look for dragons, I said to Pooh. Yes, let's, said Pooh to me. We crossed the river and found a few. Yes, those are dragons, all right, said Pooh. As soon as I saw their beaks, I knew. That's what they are, said Pooh, said he. That's what they are, said Pooh. Let's find the dragons, I said to Pooh. That's right, said Pooh to me. I'm not afraid, I said to Pooh, and I held his paws and I shouted, shoo. Silly old dragons, and off they flew. I wasn't afraid, said Pooh, said, Pooh, said he. I never, I'm never afraid with you. See that? I'm never afraid with you. Here, let's see if we look at these here. So here's the first image right here. So you see they're, they're up there, they're, they're hiking, doing another adventure in the forest. And you could barely see, I think those are turkeys over there. They see a bunch of turkeys, they decide those are dragons and they go up and try to get a little bit close to them. As, we, as I read the poem, get to this second image right here. Now you can see what they are. And, uh, and you can see that, yeah. The, and I, I, I don't, if you guys have ever seen turkeys in the wild, they're kind of scary. They're, they're loud, they flap their wings. And so these guys come upon a, uh, a bunch of turkeys, think they're dragons, and Pooh's a little bit afraid, but he's not so much afraid because he's got his best buddy, Christopher Robin, with him, right? So that together, right, we're, together we're strong. Um, so wherever I am, there's always Pooh, there's always Pooh and me. What would I do, I said to Pooh, if it wasn't for you? So, and, and Pooh said, true, it isn't much fun for one, but two can stick together, says Pooh, says he. That's how it is, says Pooh. And look, look at this image. It's actually kind of a bit of a sad image, right? In some sense, right? I said it's the end of the end of the books, right? This is the last, last real mentions of Pooh by A.A. By a. Milne. And look, he's going up the steps. And if you remember from the first Pooh, 
Kung Fu book that, that starts with the bump, bump, bump. He goes down the, down the steps, dragging his bear to hear his story from, from his father, A.A. A. Milne. And now we've done the last poem about Pooh, and look what you see here once again. Look, see? They're going up. They're going up the steps there, and he's left Pooh down below, right? It's sort of symbolizing the end of an era here, at least for Milne and for, and for Christopher Robin. Um, so there are a lot of stories that, that you'll be able to hear um, at the, uh, at the Royal Ontario Museum. When we, when we finally get to open, I'm not sure when that's gonna be, I'm not sure how that's gonna be, but it's gonna happen. And Pooh's gonna be waiting for us there. Um, you know, they, it's, a, it's a great show, uh, not only for kids, we've got the slides, we've got trees, we've got games uh, inside there. It's, it's uh, really a lot of fun, but also for adults. I mean, I enjoy immensely just getting real close to some of those images of, that Shepard drew, looking at some of the correspondence, some of the images, trying to get a sense of how that magic happened. Um, and so uh, at some point soon, um, you know, the, the clouds will part, we'll be able to, to get back to, to, to places like the museum, be able to see the Winnie the Pooh show. But in the interim, like I said, you know, pick up a book about Pooh, grab your stuffy, uh, you know, grab a stick, get out in the outdoors, enjoy yourself, come up something, come up with a, a great imaginary adventure and, uh, and just frolic for a little bit. Uh, and enjoy this time um, because as Pooh liked to all, what Pooh liked to do more than anything else, he would always say he liked to do nothing for a while. He liked to just sit around, relax, and enjoy yourself. And I know that sometimes uh, that, that, that the kids and the adults, everybody gets frustrated with this, but hey, this is an opportunity to do nothing for a while. So, so do nothing. I'm going to do nothing. Enjoy yourself outside. Enjoy yourself with the stuffies. Make, make, make incredible imaginary uh, kingdoms. And then, uh, yeah, at some point, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you at the museum. So, thanks for thanks for tuning in.